So we had a 87 TRX 70 come in, came in with a complaint from the um, customer that it was a no spark situation and had been at uh, one or two dealers, correct? Mm -hmm. um, was told that the uh, stator itself was just bad and that this is apparently a rare model and hard to get parts for. So the vehicle just sat for a couple years. So uh, our technicians here in training are going to talk about some of the tests that they've done. Well, first off, we noticed that the kill switch was just hanging here on the handlebars like this. And we determined th with the use of the manual that it is a open circuit um, to allow uh, the kill switch, or the, when the kill switch is off, the circuit is open. Why don't you grab the manual real quick there next year and let's look at that wiring diagram and talk about how you guys came to that determination. And folks, for this video, what we want to do is we're just going to highlight kind of a cool little uh, story here in the end. But they've already went through and done all these tests. And would you guys think this would have been very easy to do without the manual? No. No. All right. So we're going to go to that uh, engine stop switch there and go ahead and explain it. Okay. So when the when the uh, vehicle is able to run, the uh, the continuity or the the circuit is is. Uh, is that open? Yeah, yes. So open. When the vehicle, when the kill switch is in the off position, the circuit is closed. So what we went ahead and did was just disconnected the wires here so that the circuit is in the open position by you know by default like this. So sure. we can have sure. it, we can bypass okay. the switch. So I think from our training in class, if you guys uh, remember, Art, we've talked about eliminating as many components and getting to the basics through use of jumper wires and eliminating kill switch. Has that, has that helped in this process? Oh, absolutely. You bet. So you had another switch that you uh, verified that it worked. And Art, I think you did the test on this with your uh, multimeter? Correct. So describe what you did there. Um, trace it down to the uh, coil, fold each wire off, Test each one for continuity. All right, so that switch had continuity as, as designed? Yes. Okay, so in that one, I believe it was the same deal too, where actually in the run position, it is no continuity, correct? Yep. And what this represents, folks, is those barbells that he's pointing at there, we do, this is just kind of a nickname we have there, is that means that when those two wire, when those are a pathway across each other, that means that those two wires have continuity. So both, the ignition kill switch and then the safety tether switch on this ground the ignition system so that it won't spark. So with all that in place, we still didn't have spark, did we? No. <coughs> so then, uh, Chris, why don't you talk about the test that we did on the stator itself, the, the part that we were told was bad. Uh, we were testing the pulse coil and... Let's go ahead and see that there. Right here. Okay. So we had... a. Uh, Let's see, that's a blue and yellow wire and a green, uh, green and white wire coming out of the pulse coil. And we had to test for continuity between one of those wires and ground. And I'll highlight this quick here. So what he did is in, in, that, in that parts, or excuse me, service panel we were just looking at, all those coils are underneath here. And they all come to this harness. And this is what usually intimidates most people, is you've got all these pairs of coils coming out of here and switches and whatnot. And you just gotta break it into small parts, right? right. I mean, just one thing at a time. So the manual gave us a continuity test of... It is uh, 80 to 120 ohms. 80 to 120 ohms. So we performed that and it was good. Well, we have another tool here, which is a... Uh, uh, direct voltage adapter into our multimeter here. Man, folks, this is one of your just best uh, ignition testing tools here. And what this allows us to do is use an everyday multimeter and to basically dyno test that coil. So as we pull this over and spin the motor, we can actually read the amount of voltage coming out of that coil. And you'll actually, you guys saw that it would actually go up and down due to the rotation of the AC signal, right? Yep, right. <coughs> and, and the manual doesn't have a spec for that, but being so we had a consistent voltage coming out of that we felt well we should be able to keep moving forward the only other tests left were wiring and then the uh, excuse me the CDI box itself so we kept looking through and we discovered something on this that is also part of the ignition system that could be a problem go ahead the neutral switch uh, the neutral switch um, and can open and close and goes directly into the CDI box itself so 
even though it doesn't normally affect ignition on the majority of vehicles that we're used to working on, what we notice is when you flip the flip through the pages, it gets to a place in the manual that just specifically says to test that switch. <coughs> and then what it does is it tells us there we go right there. It tells us how it should operate, but it kind of just ends there, doesn't it? Right. So what they're basically saying is it's part of the ignition system and that it has to function as designed, but it doesn't really tell you if no spark, replace the switch. It's just telling us how to test this individual switch. Yep. Well, one of the other things that we discovered on the vehicle was a bad spark plug cap. Just want to hold up one of the other ones there. Okay, so you guys, uh, we found no spec in the manual. They don't give us anything on how to test this, which is uncommon. Most manuals are going to tell us that's about 5,000 ohms. I mean, it might be just just a little resistance, and, and they're rated differently due to part numbers on the coil. This is probably some cheap aftermarket one that doesn't have a part number on it. But um, So what we did, we put, a, we put a known good spark plug cap on there. We took and uh, just jumped our neutral switch with our own ground wire and we went ahead and verified that we actually had spark. So we gained spark, life was all good again. So the next part of this video, I'm gonna hand off here, I'm gonna do a little, kind of a fun little trick here. <coughs> and this is where a lot of times people, uh, <coughs> excuse me, People think, "Why well, I have to do the next step? I have to, I have to do everything possible with this, and everything has to be quote unquote perfect to determine whether you've uh, fixed the vehicle." So what we're doing, jumper wires and whatnot, is that we're just trying to say, "Well, shoot, okay, we found our spark, but does it even run? This vehicle, what they say, has been sitting for ten years or something, yep. yeah, something like that." So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna do what I call it carburetor in a can. You gotta be a little careful with this with fire hazards and so on. But we got key switch on, and we're gonna go ahead and actually just uh, preload the cylinder a little bit here, and then with it hooked up, we're hoping to uh, have spark. And you can see here that <laughs> this is kind of fun. You guys are laughing about this, but it is pretty cool to know that, you know what, it's worth fixing. And one thing we didn't talk about in the video was, anytime we do a test, what do we do before ever putting any money into the vehicle? I mean, somebody comes in and says, blah, 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 I think this is the problem. What test do we always perform? Compression test. A compression test. And this little guy had how much? 150. 150 pounds of compression. That gave us the confidence that we could keep moving forward. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that was kind of a fun one. We're going to go ahead and clean the car, put a new air filter in it, um, get this back to the customer with the new uh, kill switch, and they're going to be pretty happy that this apparently non-existent stator is not even a problem. Uh, what a $5 spark plug cap. We'll fix the neutral switch, and uh, this thing's going to be back on the road.